Welcome to our review for Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, developed by Insomniac Games and published by Sony Interactive Entertainment on June 10th, 2021, for $69.99 in both North America and the EU. I don't have a lifelong love for the Ratchet & Clank series. I played the 2016 game this past year after picking it up on sale for $10, and about two months before it was given away for free. And I enjoyed it well enough, but it was everything that Rift Apart was showing off in the trailers that had me really excited for this game. After all, was all the loading really that quick? Did it really look as good as it seemed? This game takes place several years after the last in this revamped timeline. Part of me thinks that there's an implication that some of the older games have happened between then and now, but I have a backlog a mile long, so I haven't played any of those ones and can't confirm. Either way, these two heroes have had a lot of adventures and defeated many evildoers, but the last few years have been pretty quiet, so they're essentially retired. During a parade held in their honor, Dr. Nefarious shows up and snatches away the Dimensionator that Clank built in order to allow Ratchet to search for his kind. One shot to the thing while rolling their eyes at Nefarious's monologuing and the thin fabric of the dimensions is starting to rip at the seams, opening rifts between space all over the place. The end result is Ratchet and Clank getting stuck and separated in another dimension, one where there isn't a Dr. Nefarious, but instead an Emperor Nefarious. On the other side of this rift, we have a whole load of characters that are alternate versions of the cast that we already know. The most prominent of these alternate characters being Rivet, a female of Ratchet's kind. Now, I wasn't expecting them to play her being that universe's counterpart to Ratchet so straight, especially considering that none of the other alternates are gender swapped. But there's no big twist and all the characters just kind of accept that as fact pretty readily. This is a pretty simple story though, so maybe I shouldn't have expected any kind of big plot twist. However, I am extremely grateful that Rivet is not just Lady Ratchet. She's her own distinct character with her own worldview that has been shaped by her experiences in her world. She has come with a full suite of relationships already established in her world, and she has even got a full set of her own problems to deal with. Critically, she's not the type of strong female character who I hate the most. Cynical and hardened and nothing else. Not only is that so overdone and often a poor way of getting across that your character is a strong woman, but it also would not have fit the world that's been crafted here. Rivet is snarky and fun. She quips and she's got her own priorities of what worlds are important to her. She has a radically different take on the situation of finding other Lombaxes than Ratchet does. In short, I think she's pretty dang great and I'm glad I got to spend about half the game with her. The world surrounding the characters is just delightful too. Everything has this lightly comedic edge to it, which means when things get really serious you feel it a bit more, but it's not a complete tonal shift that feels out of place. I think that the writing is genuinely clever in some places, but often it's more the way that the lines are delivered that really puts it over the top. The entire game has this big Saturday morning cartoon vibe that I absolutely love. So obviously we're going to be doing a lot of shooting while we are playing, and thankfully all the shooting feels amazing. When I say feels, that's literal. The haptic feedback from the DualSense controller never fails to feel nice, but I was honestly completely impressed by the usage of the adaptive triggers. Most of the weapons have a primary and secondary fire, each triggered by two different levels of pulling on the trigger. About halfway through your pull, there might be some resistance, and pressing past that is what gets you the secondary firing. For example, your starter pistol sends a steady but somewhat slow volley of projectiles at the enemy, but it's very accurate. The secondary fire sends three bullets at once much faster, but it sacrifices some of that accuracy. Some weapons use the half press as a charging period as well, letting you ready yourself for that perfect shot. The sheer number of weapons means you'll have at least a few that will suit your fancy. There's new ones to be found here, but still a few returning favorites as well if you like the classics. Perhaps my favorite detail though is that the resistance goes away completely when you run out of ammo, giving you a physical indicator of what has happened alongside the visual ones on screen. Perhaps the most improved area of the game over the last is the feeling of movement. Most of it feels about the same, but it's the additions that make all the difference. Your dash in this game is one of my favorite elements, allowing you to make it across some of the wider gaps while also leaving you feeling like you've just barely made it. It's also great for last minute saves if you find yourself starting to fall, and its utility in battle to escape a sticky situation is priceless. I also simply love the visualization of it, with a line of your character moving across the gap before all snapping back together again. Wall running is only used in some select spots where the right types of panels for doing so exist, 
but the way it's used is always a fun time, and the fact that it's been added to the already existing grind rail segments makes for another exciting layer. Many of the worlds now feel a little more open than they were before as well, so I feel like I'm getting use out of my expanded movement all the time, not just in smaller segments where Insomniac planned it out for me. In particular, the pocket dimensions scattered across the game where you can find some extra goodies serve as a wonderful series of platforming challenges that I was left wanting more of. Of course, it's not all shooting and running all the time. There are a few places where we get to explore some other types of gameplay in order to break up the pace a little. In particular, segments where you play as Clank are back, giving a more puzzle-focused segment to the game in order to slow the pace down a little. These strange puzzles where you have to guide a line of running characters to the exit are a nice diversion and you only have to do them a handful of times. While I sometimes felt they went on a touch too long since you have to do multiple in a row, I was never too mad at them because they weren't particularly difficult. The other type of diversion you will see are when you play as Glitch, a little robot destroying viruses inside a computer. I could count the number of times that I did this on one hand, and they feel a little tacked on. Glitch can't jump, only walk and shoot. However, she can walk on walls, which leads to some pretty interesting level geometry sometimes. The problem is that these segments ended up feeling like a watered-down version of the regular gameplay because it was shooting again, but with less quick mobility, which really dragged down the pace. I didn't dread these segments, but I would be lying if I said I looked forward to them. The question I am sure that everyone has is, is all the stuff in the trailers with the portals really that impressive? I'm happy to report that it is pretty dang impressive. There are only a few moments where you're repeatedly flung through rifts like in the first trailer, which does make sense because it would be a pretty choppy feeling game if you were doing that constantly. Still, when it does happen, it's really impressive, and there are a few mini-bosses and boss fights that utilize it in great ways. However, that stuff with pulling yourself to rifts to move across areas, that's all over the place, and they're a great addition to the combat, as well as the effect looking great every time I did it. The entire game is a technical showcase for the PlayStation 5, and I can completely see why this would not have worked on the last generation. In some ways, this makes me think that it's going to feel a little aged by the end of this generation, but at the moment it's an absolute joy to play. Rift Apart is a little on the short side for an adventure game of this nature, especially if you skip a bunch of the side content or hunting for collectibles. However, this is all in service of the excellent New Game Plus mode in the form of Challenge Mode. I am in the middle of my Challenge Mode playthrough right now, and I am loving it. There's a whole new level of weaponry unlocked and a currency multiplier that rewards you for going longer and doing more damage without getting hit yourself. You're going to need it too, because those new weapons are pricey to say the least. When I said that Rift Apart is a technical showcase, that goes for the visuals as well. The last Ratchet & Clank title was beautiful, and this one just tops it. The worlds feel livelier than ever, with tons of NPCs moving around in a lot of cases, and so many particles. The entire thing is flashy as all get out, and the fast loading of rapidly changing areas makes it just as impressive. Collecting gold bolts unlocks a lot of visual filters and other fun toys to play with. Don't want bolts to be your currency? Change them to rupees or energy drinks instead. Want to change the look of the game so it feels like an old, badly recorded home movie? You got it. Photo modes aren't really my thing, but from what I can tell, this one is expansive and there's a ton of options. Character design is something I try to pay a lot of attention to, and it was a total feast here. The alternate characters look just similar enough to tell that they're meant to be the same, but also having their own full look that gives off the impression of what kind of character they are at a glance. I mean, you can tell a lot about the dynamic between Dr. Nefarious and Emperor Nefarious just by looking at them standing next to each other. Rivet is my favorite, really. Usually I take issue with sexual dimorphism being introduced to a fictional species just to make the new female character look more feminine, i.e. Rivet's fuller tail, softer colors, and tuft of hair. But it was handled really well with Rivet, because none of her design is something that would look out of place if implemented on Ratchet. Besides, she just looks so cool. Like I said before, the voice acting is what sells a lot of the dialogue, and the whole team really deserves a lot of props for how fun they made it sound and how natural they all felt. Additionally, all the sound effects were excellent and just what was needed to give a real punch to what's going on on the screen in front of me. However, the biggest seller for the sound to me was the music. It's stellar. Each area's music is unique and fitting from the cyberpunk nefarious city to the little western town where you fight pirates. It completely sold the bigger moments and gave them that grand and epic scale that they needed. In fact, some of the punchier tracks might be going on my writing background music playlist. I've said that this game is technically brilliant, so how does that translate to how it runs? Well, in my case, everything ran perfectly fine. 
I never had any slowdown or crashes or even any major bugs that I can recall. The only issue I ran into was with a bit of the level design. There are a few spots that I found that are just big enough to fall in, but not big enough that you can make it all the way to the ground. So you end up falling endlessly in them until the trigger of you having fallen long enough registers you like falling off a ledge. It's more of an oversight in the level design than anything else, but it did mean I had to be a little careful while exploring to not end up getting thrown back to my last checkpoint. I love this game, and the moment I finish writing up this review, I'm jumping back into the challenge mode and searching for everything I missed out on in my first run through. It's cinematic, it's fun, it's a real showcase of what we're going to be seeing the rest of this generation. Their last few games do have Insomniac rising the ranks of my favorite developers, and this is no exception. If you manage to get your hands on a PlayStation 5, this one is well worth adding to your collection. Pros. Wonderful use of dual sense features. Compelling, if predictable, story. New characters are fun and engaging. It's just downright fun to play. Cons. Some might consider it a bit too short. Our verdict is, bright, colorful, and full of fun, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart is an excellent addition to the PlayStation 5's roster of exclusives, which is why we are giving it our ranking of Golden Child.